Hey everybody, this is Jordan. I do things, and this is how I made Majora's Mask using files from Thingiverse as well as the program Fusion 360. I'll be adding all the files that I use in the description of this video, but you can also follow along. To insert the file into Fusion 360, push Insert Mesh on the ribbon. I usually keep my units in inches because I'm Team America, but this usually screws up my mesh and I'll have to rescale it later. To scale the mesh, I'll do a quick sketch of a rectangle of the size that I want my mesh to be, and then I will scale the mesh into that box. The next step is creating two holes for my locator pins. To do this, I'll find the center of the mesh, and then I'll create a line to find the center of the two holes. I'll choose a, a number that I can use to remember easily because I'm going to be using that distance to manually drill into my stock later. For your top setup, you're going to want your stock point to be in the center of your piece. And to create the bottom, all you have to do is duplicate the top and change where your stock point is. To change your stock point, all you have to do is choose the point of the stock, which is directly on the other side of your top setup, and then flip the axis. When creating your setup, your dimensions won't matter quite yet. If you are like me, your stock piece is a little wonky yet and will have to be leveled later. And after you're done leveling it, that's how you'll determine your Z-axis. But in the meantime, you're going to want to choose the mesh as well as the pilot holes that you've created as part of your setup. This will make sure that your starting point is going to be accurate. For my first roughing pass, I used a half inch, two inch long CNC bit. Any of the bits that you use should be at least two inches and make sure that you have enough clearance while using those. For the parallel pass, you want to make sure that you do not mill into the lip of the mask. When you flip over the stock, that is where you're going to be putting your double-sided tape to hold the piece down onto your spoil board when you cut it out. If you don't have that, there's going to be a gap between the mask and your spoil board and it won't stick when you're cutting it out and it will become loose and you lose your tab. In order to prevent that from happening, all you have to do is lower the stock top of your setup of your passes just a little below, and that will prevent you from milling into that part.
Halfway through my roughing of the top part of Majora's Mask, I found that my router was going to come in contact with my stock. I didn't give it enough room uh, to reach the bottom of Majora's Mask. So in order to prevent this from happening to you, I would recommend doing two roughing passes. One, give the silhouette a 1.5 inch separation so your router can go deeper and then finish it off with a secondary roughing pass that will finish the bottom part of your part. For my finishing pass, I used a program called Steep and Shallow on Fusion 360. It's a pass that uses both parallel and contour passes to finish the product. I really liked this, even though it took quite a lot longer. The final product, I, I hardly had to do any sanding at all, and it turned out really slick. The last program that I did was a contour pass, which picks up where the steep and shallow left off. This slowly steps down until it cuts out Majora's Mask. The last program to set up is the drilling holes for the locator pins for your stock and your spoil board. You can easily do that using a bore function or a drill function, and you can use your finishing bit to do that. And that's how I made Majora's Mask. I'll be adding the Fusion 360 files as well as the STL that I used in the description of this video. If you have any comments or suggestions on this project and how I could possibly do this more effectively or more efficiently, please let me know and I'll use that for the, my next project.